It's my pleasure to meet you all tonight and I look forward to hearing about why Vault is so important and what your main issues are in your campaigns. Welcome everybody. Thank you very much for being here. It's my pleasure to be one of the hosts of today's events, uh, the very first segment of Vault Candidates. We currently have four um, elections currently taking place right now uh, in Germany and in Portugal, in Italy and in Austria. We allow the candidates to introduce themselves and introduce the elections as well. Hello, my name is André Ayer. I'm 46 years old. I'm a father of three little girls and I'm, I'm involved since last year. That was when the Volt party was uh, formally formed here in Portugal. I'm as well running for the local elections that will occur next Sunday on the 26th. And I'm the top of the list to run as a mayor of the city of Oporto. My, I'm graduate in management and currently I'm a CFO on a, a tourist group. Okay. Uh... Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Camilla Villano. Uh, I come from Italy, as you can hear from the accent. Um, currently, I'm in Vault since uh, three years, two years and a half. I started my journey in Vault Ireland and then I continued in uh, Vault Milano. Uh, and I'm the female top lead candidate together with the male top lead candidate. Uh, the election will be in Milan in the 3rd and 4th of October. They are very important elections in Italy because Milan is one of the, it's the economic capital, let's say, of the city. So it's really important for Vault Italy in general. And uh, we really put a lot of effort and energy in this campaign. And I look forward to share with you uh, my experience. As my job, I work as a business analyst in an NGO in Belgium, in Brussels, that deals with sustainability. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Emmanuel, and I'm from Volt Austria. I'm currently running for the city council elections here in Linz, Upper Austria. And I'm 23 years old, and I'm currently studying philosophy and software engineering. And All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Rebecca. I'm 32 years old and I'm right now the lead candidate in the national elections coming up on 26th of September here in Germany. Um, I'm a, from a professional perspective. I've studied business administration and worked for seven years in yeah, very different areas from startup to consulting to um, the industry, actually for um, a cable producer. And uh, in the last part, I actually worked in a tourist company. However, um, when I started working with Vault, which was right after the um, European elections in 2019, actually, um, we started working here for local uh, elections, the campaign um, in, for the city council. And we run a huge success uh, last year in that area, which made me then, um, yeah, actually decide to campaign for this national elections. And I'm very much looking forward to share with you all those uh, great experience, I guess, you already had, we have, and uh, yeah, to see how that goes on. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. We're going to do what you might call a bit of a, uh, a quick round because uh, Lucas and I will ask you three questions and you all get um, 10 to 15 seconds to reply to each question. So we will ask the questions and then you will answer them just like you did now in the same order of candidates. So in 10 or 15 seconds, tell us why do we need Vault and why should we be running across all of Europe? Okay, I guess it's me. Um, in my opinion, we need to 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 have vote to have a unified voice across all over Europe, in order to protect uh, Europe against all these modern threats that we are facing, like the geopolitical ones, and as well as the environment ones. We, we cannot hide from the climate changes, and we need policies very focused on the climate changes. 
and as well we should uh, run across Europe in order to have the, the to have the same values and share the same point of views. That's very important to have a common common language. Very good, Andre. Thank you so much. And Camilla. Um, for sure, uh, in Europe we have a, a very a big strength, which is diversity, and we don't use that enough. Uh, challenges that have been dealt in Helsinki, Amsterdam, uh, or Dublin are the same challenges that we face in Milan or Rome, and uh, we we, sh we can just share best practice between each other so that we can solve challenges that we already solve in other countries by sharing them. So that's why we need both. Amazing. Thank, thank you, Camilla. And so why do we need Vault and why should we be running across Europe? Emmanuel, please. Um, we need Vault to provide a different vision for the people and citizens of Europe, a vision that uh, unites and shows, shows to the people that a different vision um, than nationalism is possible. Very, very good. And Rebecca, finally you, 15 yes. seconds. So we have quite a lot of great challenges like the climate crisis, uh, the climate crisis, the pandemic, but also digital transformation. And all those challenges don't stop on national borders. So we actually need European parties to bring up European solutions. Very good. Thank you so much. Lucas, over to you. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you very much for those great answers. Uh, so, next question. What makes Vault unique in your country? Um, besides being a, a pan-European project, and in this way we develop and, pro and we share this project in a progressive and a pragmatic way of doing policy, that's, that's the main thing that distinguished from the other let's say regular parties we do policy based on scientific evidence not based on ideologies like the the, the old ideologies that we have on the right and the left that's the main difference from the rest of the parties here in portugal Yes, terrific. Thank you. And Camilla, 15 seconds. Uh, Camilla, you're on mute. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. So what makes Vault unique in Italy is for sure the fact that uh, we are, the, let's say, the part in which we have more young people and in which we actually care about the interests of young people and the next generation. Often when I went in debates, et cetera, I'm always the youngest one because I'm 27. And I can see clearly that in politics, younger people don't have a voice, especially in Italy, which is an old country. So votes are taken from, let's say, older people. And nobody really cares about what young people and the next generation needs. Thank you very much. Uh, Emmanuel. The unique thing about Volt in Austria is that we are not Young. The unique thing about Volt in Austria is that we are not only pro-European, but we are the only party in Austria that acts on a European level in all countries of Europe. Thank you very much, Manuel. Uh, Rebecca? We are the only pan-European party in Germany, so we are the strong voice for Europe on all different levels instead of a German voice that we have right now by the German government on the European level. Thank you very much for the great question, uh, great answers. Catherine, back to you. Thank you so much. Now, do remember it's a, a quick round, so 15 seconds maximum, okay? Um, the last question in this round is, if elected, what are you most excited about going to work with? Now, let's um, start, Andre. Okay, thank you. As a first priority, I would like to shorten the distance between the common citizen and the policymakers. 
we realized here in Portugal that there is a huge gap between the normal citizen and the politicians. And we want to start to attract more people to policy and policy makings and the way we run our lives on a daily basis. Thank you so much. Uh, Camilla, to you, if elected, what are you most excited about starting to work on? Um, for sure, uh, I'm excited. Really, I'm very much excited about gender equality. It's such a big issue, especially in Italy. And I look forward to work on, uh, let's say, making Milan uh, more woman friendly and to make sure that uh, younger women are hurt and they have like a place in the political landscape in Italy. Amazing. Thank you so much. And Emmanuel, if elected, what are you most excited about working on? Um, if elected, I'm most excited about to finding solutions to the big problem of limbs, and that is to um, shorten the time of everything uh, in the daily life, like commuting um, and government uh, businesses and everything else. Amazing. Thank you so much, Emanuel. And finally, Rebecca, what would you be most excited about if elected to the, to the Bundestag? I would be most excited about introducing a high-speed European railroad system, um, which we definitely need to be better connected and fight the climate crisis. Lovely. Thank you so much for those answers. Back to you, Lucas. Thank you very much, all the candidates. Those were great answers. Uh, so now we are going to go to the next step of the interview, which is four questions in which you have about one minute and a half to answer them. So very first one, how do you define vote in comparison to the other parties you're running against? Andre, you're first. As I mentioned before, we are a totally new party and in Portugal, never seen before. First, because we are pro-European ones, totally pro-European ones. And we have a different kind of doing policy. We are progressive. We do policy based on scientific uh, evidence. And as well, we are very pragmatic. We are going to search for solution, no matter if it's came from the right part or the right or the or the left part of the policy streams. So that's what's distinguished as as well. We have a a main goal that is to start to make the common people doing policy, not let them to the politicians. We have a major project here in, in Porto is to, to set up a citizens assembly in order to start um, discussing and implementing some major issues here in the, in the Porto city. That's totally different out of the box than ever seen here in Portugal. And as well, we have also another different project that is the RBI, the, uh, I don't know the English name for that, but it's the, the, com the, um, the basic income for everyone, meaning that it's totally as well out of the box. And I think we have a very good perspectives in the elections with this program. Very good. Thank you very much, Andre. Uh, Camilla. Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, it's very clear from how we are different from the, let's say, the far right or right movement in Italy. Uh, but uh, I would focus on the diversity of the party who looks a bit more similar to us. So the difference between us or uh, Pi Europa or Azione is that uh, for sure in Volt, we are much more focused on uh, let's say, civic rights or environmental rights, rather than, um, let's say, economics or liberal economics. So we are much more for th those are our priority. And economics is a way to reach to them. It's not the final aim, let's say. Um, and then for sure, we are like pan-European and uh, not uh, only like, let's say, um, fan of Europe. We want to improve the European Union. We have a clear statement on how we want to improve the European Union. So uh, we recognize that there is things that in EU can be fixed and we want to fix it. So we are not just fan of Europe because we're like, oh yeah, Europe is great. No, Europe is great, yes, but needs to be adjusted. 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, we are like uh, much more, uh, let's say, we are really different from all of the old political party in Italy because we don't have a big name in front of us. Usually all the political, the big political parties have this uh, big uh, man or woman behind it. And then the party, even if it doesn't have a lot of, uh, let's say, a lot of people that are within it, uh, they are still more famous than us, which sometimes it doesn't make sense. So in Volt, it in Volt Italia, we are not like following one person. We are following ideas. We propose them and that's what we do. It doesn't matter. It's not a personalistic way of doing politics. It doesn't matter if I get elected or another girl gets elected. What Volt Italia will do in Milan, it's very clear. It doesn't matter who goes there to do it. While uh, in Italy, usually there is this very personalistic way of electing people just because you're charmed by them or because you have these strong personalities. But in both, we want to change that. It's about the group and it's about the idea. It's not about uh, the persona or the leader. Uh, so I think those are the main differences. Thank you very much, Cabela. So, Emmanuel, so. Uh, how do you define Vault in comparison to the other parties you're running against? Um, I would define Vault as something that provides a vision for a future and does not just want to manage the current situation and bring incremental solutions. As Vault, we provide a vision how the future could be and how parties in the future could look like. It work across borders and think across borders because our problems of today are not limited to our cities, to our regions, um, not even to Europe. And that's why we need a different kind of mindset to tackle those issues. Because if everyone acts on their own small island, let's say, we will have no clear path to the future. And I think that's what makes Vault different. We have a vision that is pluralistic and humane. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Uh, Rebecca, back to you. Yes, so for me, it's definitely the differentiation is that we do what we call new politics. So a new way of doing politics, which is fact-based and research-based. So we look on what does research say instead of power plays that we focus on. We are in a very integrative party, which means that actually from day one, you can get engaged and be part of the team and really make a difference in contributing. We are super European because we're actually available in 29 countries Europe wide with the same politics, the same, um, you can say policies. And we are digitally connected as well as personally connected to our European colleagues. And we're as well pragmatic, which means for me that we look actually on the objective we want to reach. And we do have a shared value framework within Vault, but the way how do we reach those objectives is clearly that we look for the best solution for everyone, for every European citizen, instead of looking on what does conservatives say, what do progressive parties say as well. So that what makes it different for me. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, Catherine? Yes, this is, this is going very, very well. These answers are amazing. And um, the next one is a bit more, um, I suppose, reflecting on the voters and the people in public that you meet. Because um, being a young party and a new party, um, there'll be lots of people who ask different questions and have different comments. So you, you have about a minute or a minute and a half to, to answer these questions. And the question would, would be, when you talk to your voters, what are some of the, the key comments that you get from different age groups or key electoral groups, for, for example? If you can help us understand some of the feedback that you're getting from the different people that you meet on the streets. Please start, Andre. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Um, Vault in Portugal is a very recently and new party and it's quite unknown for almost everyone here. 
And our main task is to show the common citizen that, hey, we are here, we are a new party with different ideas. So at, at the beginning, people start to, to, to react a little bit strange. Who are these guys? Why do they, what is pan-European policy? Why do they share the same values or the same scope as a German person or an Italian or a Spanish? And then they start, after we start to speak about, we, we start showing that it's the importance of the European Union and how they run our daily life with all the support that we receive from the European Union, like in laws or, in, or on finance, on, on financement. And we are mostly welcome for young people, you know, mostly from people that have studied abroad and realize the, the, the importance of the European Union for their lives, which they, they, they never experience physical borders. They can travel from Portugal to Finland without stopping on any border. They can use the same currency and then start to realize this is the future. And as well, when we start, we start to talk about the, our environment and ambient policies, they start to realize, oh, this is, these are the guys that really concern about these major issues. And they start to see, that's the party that I was looking for to start doing policy with you. And it's very, very, very good for us to hear things like this. But this is only for the young people and when we start to people. yes when we start to speak about we uh, about vote with um, all people they are not very keen of our ideas and they are more national attached to the old policies and to the old parties it's a way we have a way to okay to start doing yeah. changes very good uh let's Let's try to keep to the to the time as well. Okay. So a minute and a half. Thank you. Um, so Camilla, um, what are the key comments that that you get from the different people that you meet on the on the street? Um, please share. <laughs> I start with the funny ones. So they ask us if we are like a club or if we are uh, an electric car company. So those are the key two. <laughs> Uh, things that are associated to our logo, apparently. Uh, uh, but then, yeah, they, let's say, uh, in Italy, we have a lot of parties. So a lot of people ask us, oh, do you think the solution is another party? Because in Italy, we have so many. And they are like, you know, they're born and then they go away very fast. So uh, let's say they really want to know what another party could bring, you know, which I kind of understand from a certain point of view, and it's a fair comment to make. Uh, and then uh, I see that people are also very interested in understanding, like, why we uh, would be different. You know, they ask us, like, oh, what is in, our, in your program, which is something that I never thought about, because I always thought nobody reads the program, right? Like, nobody reads the cover letter. <laughs> they only see the faces and <laughs> the keywords, but actually people are interested in what are your proposals and another thing that another feedback that we got uh, was that we really let's say they all look at us and they're like oh but you're really like young like because there's issue of uh, getting young people into politics and then they see at our like stance where there are people of 16 years old and they're like oh but you have like you really give voice to everyone so that's a, a very nice comment to make wonderful thank you so much camilla and uh, Emmanuel, do tell us a little bit about the key messages that you've received while you've been talking to people on the street. Yes, so the funny for one also first, um, a lot of people like our merch, so they want to buy those things and also think that we are some kind of electricity company and want to sell them stuff. Um, but then in the other um, aspect, I was really amazed by how positive um, people were um, responding to us when they were responding to us. Some some people don't listen to us because like they don't are really interested in politics. But if they have some kind of interest in politics, they're like, huh, that's an interesting solution working on, on climate on a European level. And especially for those people who consider themselves European, pro-European, 
they find it interesting and it gives them some kind of hope because a lot of them are disillusioned by Europe because it's dysfunctional. And they think, hey, yeah, this is, this is, this is a great way. You're trying to make it a bottom to top approach and include those people and they love it when we are just listening. And that's, this is one thing that I find amazing, just, just listening and seeing how people react to just being a, a person, just, just listening and saying, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's really important what you say and um, I'm listening. So it's, it's a very positive feedback that we got. That is terrific to hear and very um, rewarding, I think. Finally, to you, Rebecca, what are some of the key comments you're getting from people that you meet on the street? Yes, so you have to know in, in Germany that around 70% of the people here actually are looking for a change in politics. So this makes also that we have in the polls right now others, so the small parties at roughly 10%. And all the established parties are not reaching the 30% anymore, which is completely new in Germany, never has been the case in previous elections. So that also brings me to the normal comments we get when being available on the street is that people tell me, okay, I do have the choice between bad, worse and worst. And then I always tell people like, okay, but aren't you looking for a party you can actually vote for? by being and being convinced that this party actually can make a difference so that you believe that they do have the good solutions, working solutions, and that they do have the people that also can implement those solutions. And when I then also add to that we are considering everything like Emmanuel just said on a European level, so we actually offer to those over a cross border challenges, we offer European solution because we have to as you also said, Camilla, in the beginning, it's not because we're so great European fans or fans of the European Union, but rather that we do see a solution and in that institution, but we have to reform it. And that really clicks with people, I have to say. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for these very detailed questions. Back to you, Lucas. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you very much, all the candidates. Those are amazing answers. I'm really getting excited. And uh, one of the next question, the next question is one that things sets us apart from everybody else and all the other parties out there. How do you feel and have witnessed voters across Europe are supporting you and your campaign? How, how are we conducting cross-border campaigns? Andre, you're the first. Um, in what concerns to the Oporto campaign, we are quite far from the rest of the Europe and as well as from vote. We are, I shouldn't say alone, but we are relying only on our local team. As of course, we, we get the support from the design to, to do the, the posters or the flyers and everything as well, the software, and it's a big help. But in terms of manpower, we depend only on local, on local teams. But last week we, we received a huge help for a small, a small party like we have here in Portugal. It was that came a package from Volt Holland that sent us a package with a with an offer with some t-shirts and some flags that will help us to go to the streets and show why hey, we are here we have we are vault that's great well thank you very much andre uh camilla to the next yes um so i think uh, of course vault italia is uh, very big so, I mean, I have to say we got some manpower from Volt Italia first. And then I, I also like when we organized uh, before we got into the middle of the campaign, a lot of events uh, with Aileen or other candidates, former candidates um, that uh, came to help us to let us know how it is to be a candidate in order to uh, foster more people in Italy to become a candidate because we were having a bit this uh, issue. Uh, from Volta Europe, like for 
the, the issue is for the fundings, of course, that, you know, it's a bit complex to pass from Volt Europa to Volt Italia to Volt Milano. So I have to say on the founding side, uh, on the money side, we feel a bit alone because we can only rely on crowdfunding either directly to us or to Italy. Like th the way how we exchange the money is a bit like um, weird. But overall, I feel the I feel the support. We had also German flyers sent over on how we could do that. We had a call, you know, with uh, the German team as well. So I have to say uh, we managed to somehow get the support. We also had Rainier who came uh, to our big event on the on the fourth of October when we launched our li our list. So for sure, I think we felt European support. But Andre, I know Walt Ireland was, for instance, five people and we were alone and far away from everyone. So I feel you. I know how I know how it is. Grazie mille. So, Manuel, you're there next. But yeah, um, when considering the people on the ground, we were pretty much alone, but um, it was great to see um yeah, the movement in in austria from from graz to to from vienna to linz and to see how at, at least people uh, in our country were um, helping us out here in linz and we profited so profited so much from uh, the resources and, and things like um design um all the things that would, were worked out by um Boulder europe europa and other chapters so even though we didn't have the, the, the people on the ground from other chapters, we profited a lot from all the other stuff, from, from the design, from the policies, from, uh, yeah, from the um, posters we got uh, from, 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 from Germany. And it was, it was great to see that we are not alone and that we got some help. And this was amazing because I couldn't have imagined it. Like if I would have found it a party in like Linz, it would be okay where do you start and it was like okay this helped a lot to to bring change to Linz and to really um use the capabilities that we have like the people in the ground that is something we could use um like the digital stuff was like covered thank you manuel rebecca you're the next thanks yes so i i actually i can feel you emmanuel because um I sometimes have those panic attacks where I'm like, oh my God, there is so much we have to do and so many challenges we have to face. And sometimes it feels like completely overwhelming. But then I, on the next second, consider that we are not alone in that because we are a European party and we do have especially the people power to share, so the knowledge. And also I had those very nice events where I visited Münster um, a town here close by in North Rhine-Westphalia. And I was welcomed by Vol Twente, actually. So they were the first people from the Netherlands that I met there, um, instead of the, the Volt team in Münster, actually, because they were visiting for, for the local campaign. Um, and stuff like that makes me actually realize that we are really not alone and that we can share, you know, our capacity, our knowledge, and all the competences we have and that, yeah, makes me actually believe and being convinced that we can manage all that. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And I have all the candidates. Those are great answers. It really shows where we can actually prove and we are doing the right cross-border support. Uh, Vault is unique in that regard that we actually can travel everywhere and support online. Uh, we are a member, a party of more than 20,000 people and we are across Europe and we are really helping everywhere. And um, with that, uh, I would like to give the floor back to Catherine. Yes, for the final question in this round. So again, it's a minute and a half maximum, but uh, we've heard so many really positive stories and that's, that's amazing. And I think we all are invigorated by knowing that, that there's all this positivity all over Europe. It's also hard to run a campaign. So this is the last question. And I, I would like you to be you know, exploring a little bit the hardships as well, because what are some of the hurdles uh, that, that you're facing in, in your campaign? I think it's, it's good to know um, what everyone should be, be prepared for, I think. 
So let's start with with you, uh, Andre. Okay, thank you, Catherine. I think the, the biggest challenge that we are facing on this campaign is the lack of manpower. We are a few members here in Oporto and we almost running a campaign with five, six people to, uh, to the second largest city in Portugal. So it's not easy to get everywhere, to contact everywhere, everyone to go to the streets, but we are thrilled with that. We are very enthusiastic and and um, that's challenge everything. And the second biggest problem that we are facing as well, not so biggest as, as the lack of manpower is a lack of funds because the democracy is not cheap and for doing to printing flyers and billboards and everything and doing some publicity on radio on or, or on social media, we need some money that we still don't have. So that's the second biggest problem that we are facing. The rest is going very well and for sure we'll have a very good, very good result on next summer. Very good, thank you, Andre and and Camilla. What are some of the hurdles you're facing in Milano? Okay. Uh, well, for sure. I mean, um, you exactly. You realize that a campaign is very expensive. You have to take that into account, uh, and even to do the minimum stuff because we are not even uh, spending as much money as they told us that we should in order to get the minimum votes. So this was a bit of a bad thing to realize that in order to do politics, you kind of have to be rich, which is very unfair. Uh, and uh, then one of the hardship is, of course, that uh, you as a new party, it's really hard to be heard. So as a, before being a lead candidate in Milan, I was a PR lead. So uh, we were contacting all the influencers and, you know, people in order to get visibility. And uh, it's really hard to be heard as a new party. And also when people that are not into politics, they don't want to be associated with politics. So it really sucks when a person who has, you know, one million Instagram followers, they reply, oh, yeah, I really like you, but I cannot be seen talking to you because you're a party. And then you're like, yes, but it's not that you're going to vote for me if you, you know, if we have an interview or if we talk. But uh, it's still, uh, maybe it's just in Italy, but it's still so bad to be seen when you talk to a party, even if you are young, you know, nice and positive and, you know, we, we never associate with anything negative. So being heard and also it happened as well that as a new party at my last uh, event in Milan, uh, they did a, it was an event about gender equality and uh, young women in politics. And they only allowed Gabriele to speak. And then when it was my turn, they didn't let me speak. And at the end, and I was the only under 30 candidate in the room. So they were all over 40 and they were all like, oh, we need more younger girls. And I was like, yeah, you don't even let me speak. Yes, indeed. So I think, and that's because I'm, we don't count enough, you know, because they, they, let, they let all the other people who were more important uh, politically in Milan, but they didn't let me speak. So I think this is something that then really gets into your nerves and, you know, you should be a bit prepared psychologically to don't take it personally and move on yeah claiming your space is always difficult um but also important i think that's something that we're all learning the hard way uh what do you think emmanuel what are some of the hurdles that you're facing in linz um the, the biggest hurdle was to to have the people on the ground i think um and that everything was kind of new um, we l had a lot of experience from the uh, Vienna elections that helped a lot. And I think the one hurdle was um, the media coverage at the beginning. Um, but I think for a really, really small campaign, it's, it's, I think it's, it's a super small campaign. We have like um, only 15 uh, posters and we put them strategic, strategically around the city and still people kind of know us. I think it's also because of the uh, coverage in Germany, but um, it's interesting to, to, to see and to hear that for a small campaign, it kind of works. 
Um, but it's also the difficult thing that we don't have enough uh, people on the ground that talk to everyone and it's very difficult to organize and to orchestrate um, the people because we have to move a lot of people around, especially from Vienna, because most of our um, people are in Vienna. And um, I am glad that I'm a, a student because otherwise it wouldn't um, wouldn't have been possible. And I have all uh, I had the summer like August and September all free for vote, and that helped a lot. But um, I think if the elections would have been in like uh, October, December, it would have been a totally different story. So I think. The biggest hurdle is to have people that have really, really, um, uh, that have a lot of time. That's a very good point, actually being available uh, and actually having the time and being available at the right time is, 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 pretty, is pretty crucial. So really um, having people on the ground uh, is a coordinating effort. Um, well, Rebecca, some of the hurdles that you're facing do tell. Yes, so I think um, I can actually um, kind of relate to all the hurdles you just already mentioned. However, here on a national level, we do have an additional hurdle, which is the 5%. So we have to reach a maximum of 5 or no, not a maximum, but we at least have to reach 5% of all votes to enter actually the national parliament. And therefore, a lot of people, because everyone feels like, okay, we need political change. However, I have to somehow vote strategically to kind of prevent this or that candidate from actually happening and becoming the new chancellor. And this is quite difficult to kind of yeah, fight against because a lot of people tell me, okay, if I vote for you and you're not entering the national parliament, then actually my vote is lost. And then you always have to convince because, I mean, for me personally, I'm 100% convinced that on a democratic level, your vote is never lost, even on small, for a small party, because first of all, it's a huge statement in terms of what am I convinced is the right way to go forward in terms of a party. Secondly, we actually, the more votes we get, the more pressure that generates for all the other parties to think on a European level and act on a European level. And thirdly, of course, it gives us more reach on the long run. And if you really want to have the change, you have to vote for that party you're actually convinced that brings the change. So, and I think in addition, what I can add is also the time factor you just mentioned, because for me, for example, I quit my job last year and I'm now living on funding or savings, so to say. Um, and I um, feel super in a luxury position that I can actually afford that, but a lot of people can't. And I mean, I can only do that for not too much more of my time, but now it works. So that's actually quite nice. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you to all of you for doing this extended round with us. Um, you've been talking about um, you know, a, a, a quick round about why we need Vault and, and what makes Vault unique in your country and what you'd like to work on if you get elected, um, how Vault compares to other parties that you're running against, some of the key comments and feedback that you're getting from the different people that, that you meet on the street, and, uh, and, and how the cross-border campaigns are actually working. We'll, we'll let you speak for another two minutes. Each and, each and every one of you will do a final comment, uh, two minutes each. Uh, this might be a topical to what you are actually working on in your campaign, what your focus is, why you are running, and uh, why you are uh, emboldened to work on these issues. Um, uh, Emmanuel, you have a hand. Uh, yeah, I have to go quickly and do like in 30 seconds. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so the final round, um, we would like to hear from each candidate um, a final comment from, from you. Because right now we've been talking about why we need vote, um, what makes vote unique in, in your country, and if elected, what we, would you like to work on? We've also discussed how Vault is different from the other parties that you're running against, what 
feedback you're getting from people on the street, um, how you're being helped and how cross-border campaigning actually work because both supports each other and uh, some of the hurdles that, that you're facing. But finally now, two minutes, we would like to hear from each and every one of you why you are compelled to run in, in your campaign, what motivates you and what you're hoping to achieve if you are elected. Two minutes, each and every one of you. Okay, I think it's my turn. Um, what did compel me to, first of all, join both and being the lead of the campaign here in Porto was the, the main core of Vault and the, the Pan-European project that is what I think is the solution for all the problems that we are facing now and especially for a small and external country like Portugal that alone won't be very, very stable. And we are a very recently party, not very well known for everyone here in Portugal. And we are most, first of all, we are expecting that this campaign will show to everyone in Portugal that, hey, we are here. We are a new country with a different way of doing politics and with kind of different ideas, more inclusive, concerned with the environment and social problems and justice that somehow are sometimes forgotten for the, let's say, the, the other parties. And we hope not, of course, we expect to, to elect a council, but it's quite like a miracle if it happens because we are so small and so recently that it's, it will be like almost impossible. But what will, will help me or at the end of the day will be like at the end of the campaign that almost everyone will know what is vote, what, what it is fans, what it stands for. That's my main goal because this is not like a sprint, this is a marathon, and we have just started now, and we are doing the, the right path to get known and to get elected for sure for the next election. Thank you so much, Andrea. I think that's a very, um, it's a very pragmatic approach as well, because you have to start somewhere and, uh, and, and get acknowledged. Camilla, can you, can you give us Two minutes of your time and tell us why you're running and what you want to achieve. So I started to run, uh, I decided to candidate because, because I wanted to be a symbol because I'm, again, I'm very young, I'm a girl and uh, we didn't have many girls who wanted to be candidate as lead candidates, not candidates in general. Uh, and I think there is the need to see more normal people who gets out there and do politics because we don't have a lot of point of reference, especially in Italy. If you do politics again, you're probably very privileged or you, you know, you have the time and the money instead, you know, I have a normal job, I work and do that by the same time doing involved. And I wanted to show that this is kind of possible. So hopefully that even if one person sees it and is a bit inspired, I would be very happy. <laughs> so that's why I, why I decided to do it. And of course, uh, if I get, again, if I get the chance to be elected or if at least one person of vote, which is our aim, gets into the municipality, at least we show that, uh, you know, a group of uh, 30 people, which are the people who compose the local Milan team who are very, very active, can actually be a uh, very big party, like uh, the, the biggest one who, who run, you know, and that can actually take one person and at the end of the day, ideas and, you know, good ideas and a lot of willingness and being, you know, positive that can pay off in a world in which we only see that, you know, you have to scream, you have to say, oh, this sucks. And, you know, you have to do a lot of gut things. And I hope that another way of doing, doing politics is possible and that we show that people would like that. So hopefully that would be very emblematic and I hope we are able to show that. But either way, uh, it's a, it has been such a good experience. I mean, it's challenging, but let's say 
very formative for me. I learned a lot what I want and how it is to do politics in Italy. And uh, I think that at the end of the day, it was definitely worth it, no matter how the world goes. Amazing. Thank you so much, Camilla. I think um, I think being motivated to change the way politics is being done is really a key factor. Um, but I don't want to take any word out of your mouth, Emmanuel. Uh, please, in two minutes, tell us why you're why you're running and what your motivation is to to achieve. So I'm running because I like it's the same reason why I joined Volk. It's that I had the feeling that we need some kind of pragmatic solutions, and those solutions should be based on listening to the people and including them in the policy making process. And um, I think I have a feeling that there's not enough vote in Upper Austria and in Linz. And I was excited to have the opportunity to um, spy in Vienna and see how it could be. And my goal is to one day make um, Upper Austria and Linz the biggest vote uh, local chapter in Austria. And I think we've managed to do a lot with um, very, very few people. And it was very interesting to see um, how democracy really works, how it is possible for like a, a team of three people and uh, a huge um, help from Vienna and other people um, to start an election, to get exposure, and that we are already, um, the people know us, and especially the small parties know us. We are a name for the parties, and now we go with to and for the last week to show the people that we exist. And then we can start building a bigger chapter, local chapter. And I think it would be the, the best thing. Um, uh, yeah, it would be the, the goal of this campaign. Because the, the goal of the campaign was to get exposure, to get experience, and to, to fail in those things that we, where we campaign and that we learn and make um, some best practices. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. The air is full behind you and we are going to continue supporting you. And uh, last but not least, Rebecca. Yeah, thank you. So, I mean, what I just heard is, guys, you're doing such an important and amazing job because I can only tell from the experience we had here in Cologne. And from my personal experience, I mean, I never wanted to go into politics. I was completely focused on my, you know, career actually in yeah business administration and stuff. And that actually changed stepwise. So first of all, when I learned about the Brexit, when Trump was elected, but also when I was traveling across Europe by plane every week to another country and kind of observing while doing that, that Fridays for Future is demonstrating on the on the streets. So that didn't make sense for me. But I also learned then when joining was here in Cologne that in those local elections and actually achieving 5% of the votes in a city of 1 million, like it's the fourth largest city in Germany, and entering the local city council and now forming a cooperation with the two biggest parties in that city council and actually being able to contribute to the local policies here and making a difference that it is possible and i mean Camilla, you mentioned funding and under you as well we managed that with roughly 10 to 12 thousand euros and everyone i tell that within the established parties is like what not believing that because it's the people power. And it's like the motivation that people bring um, to the table that we manage to engage with involved. And that really makes a difference. And it's so important that we do that because no one else will come and do the job for us. Thank you so, so much for your commentary and for your for your thoughts and your ideas. I think you will all, um, even just hearing each other's comments, you're really, we're really building on each other's ideas and, and making each other uh, sharper and better by just being in this, in this room together. Um, we're going to have uh, just a short end remark here. So um, 
I will speak a little bit and then Lucas will also say a little bit just to wrap things up. And then I will do a short spiel about, uh, about the elections that are taking place here in, uh, in, uh, in Denmark in November. But should I, take, should, should I start, Lucas? Is that okay? Yeah, uh, actually, maybe, I, uh, sorry, let us first answer Camilla first, yes. Sorry, guys, yeah, I really need to leave. I'm not sure if this facts uh, uh, like the, the feed up or, no, uh, or, or, or not. Uh, it's, we're able to focus on one person only, right? Or the final cut. Okay. Uh, it would be great if you can stay with us until then. If not, of course, we can understand the can, uh, can, uh, candidates have a very tight schedule. Uh, I remember that myself when I was there. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Uh, well, first, but uh, if you need to leave, thank you. I, no, it depends. I wanted to ask you, like, I need to leave in five minutes if you want oh. five minutes. Otherwise, I leave now if it's better for the cats. Okay. Uh, it, would, it would be nice. I think we, we just need five more minutes and then we're done anyways. Ah, perfect. Um, okay, okay, good. But, grazie mille for the question. Um, uh, Catherine, uh, maybe just answering your question, maybe what we can do is you can uh, have your closing remarks, talk about Denmark, and I can just have the very last remarks and then we're done for the day. Is that okay? Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to... Um, really reflect on what everybody has been saying about the elections that, that you're all taking part in, because first of all, it's about people. It's about, first of all, getting people interested in a new political party, which is its own challenge. Why should we have a new party? Don't we already have enough parties? Then saying, but aren't you too young? You're too inexperienced. You don't have someone famous in your organization. How will you manage? Personally, I have met a lot, a lot of skeptics on the streets, and uh, it can it can really fill you with some demotivation. But only until you remember that all the challenges that we face, literally all of them, have been solved. Like 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 you said, Rebecca, have been solved somewhere else in the world, or certainly in Europe or even in the neighboring town that we live in, we all experience the same challenges in different degrees and different ways. And so being in a local election, which is also a question I get asked a lot, but you're a European party, what are you doing in a local election? That's strange, but it's not. Because in order to captivate people to imagine what a new type of politics can be, you have to be where people are. And we are anchored where we stay, where we live, where we work, where we bike, where we drive around. We are living here. This is our, this is our place. This is our uh, world is, is this local uh, area. And so running in a local election makes perfect sense because we are trying to do things differently and we are trying to do things in a new way. And only by really representing those European ideas on a local level, I think that's the key to really captivating the spirit of what Bob was trying to do, which is building a bottom-up party, just like, just like you were saying, Emmanuel, and building a bottom-up party and actually engaging people locally and where they are in, in a sense of saying, I can make a difference. And I have had so much difficulties talking about democracy because democracy is something that people perceive in different ways. Democracy is, well, isn't it just power of the people? So if you're enough people, then you can just make a decision. But really, democracy is about believing that, that your voice is important. It's actually about learning how to organize your voice together with others to make the change that you want to see. So democracy isn't just something that, that happens to you. It's something that you're ingrained in, something that, that you're part of. And we have been taught and told for so many years now, for decades, that Democracy is something that, that politicians do. They are the professional ones. They are professionals acting in democracy. But we're taking that to a new level and saying, no, what we're doing is actually reinventing democracy by claiming and by ensuring that our voices are heard in a, in a new way. So thank you for, for that. And uh, the local elections in Flexbet will be the first time that we're running in Denmark. So I'm very excited. And it's also very hard work, I can assure you. Uh, <laughs> but very, 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 very rewarding because it's where I live. 
So it's something very personal for, for me as well. Thank you very much, Catherine. And thank you very much, all the candidates who have who have come today. Uh, we have four candidates of four different countries. No other party in Europe can actually say that. And we are right now running in right, right now several cities across Italy and Portugal. We are running across Germany at the national elections and regional elections, and also currently right now running in Linz, Austria. Now. We just this year we have run, we have been running in almost about 10 countries and in over 20 different elections. No other party can actually do that. And we, at the moment, what we are doing is even though well, sometimes we can actually learn something and fail or sometimes having successes, we are across, we're learning across those successes across all of Europe. And this is one of the key things that makes Vault separate in a, in a success story for across Europe. Vault is just the very first pan-European party. We might not be the last, but we're definitely the first and we're writing the books on how to do this. But in the end, these campaigns that we are currently doing across Europe is about people, the European people who are coming together from different countries, setting aside past historical differences as well, and running with one just common umbrella and one common future. Right now, most likely, if you're watching this in Europe, you're most likely sitting very close to another Vault chapter. We encourage everybody to come out and actually vote for them and also enjoy, see if you can actually join one of those parties. We are always open to reach and we'll talk with everybody. And right now we are currently running uh, for three elections, which will be uh, the date of the elections will be the 26th of September. And in Italy, we are, uh, well, the elections will be on the 3rd and 4th of October. I want to thank all of the candidates who finished huh, coming and joining today. And uh, I wish all of you very much best of luck. Uh, and thank you very much for joining us. And uh, the next segment will definitely be covering more Europeans and connections across the continent. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you very much. And go out to vote.